Hi, I'm James from IRCCenter.com. Uh, thanks for watching our video. Uh, if you find anything that you can use, uh, then please give us a like and a share and subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Also, uh, visit MyRCCenter.com. It's a uh, website for the remote control community. Invite your friends where you can create your own groups, both private and public. Uh, show us your YouTube videos and projects that you're working on. Um, today I'm going to do a review on the Carol Moran. Uh, it's by Dumas Boats. It's a kit. So when you pick up the box, don't think there's a little completed boat in there. It's not. It's going to take some work to put together. Uh, the uh, skill level on this is about intermediate. Uh, and there is a lot of little things in here. But you can add a lot more or not add it all in there and still have a good uh, running boat. Uh, I use the, uh, for the power plant, the uh, servo motor uh, directions. Um, I think that's quite good if you're running it on a pond with uh, no debris in the water and no wind or in a swimming pool. Uh, but uh, if you're going to be running outdoors in, in Oklahoma or any other windy state, then you need to add a little bit more. So I'll also be doing a review on the... Uh, Dumas 2021 motor. Uh, this video is pretty long, not to put it down, uh, but we're going to break this up to where we have the uh, part two will be the balance in the boat and part three will be the uh, power plant. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and we really do appreciate you. Okay, we have the Caramel Ram uh, Arbor Tug here and uh, let's go ahead and go through the contents of the box and uh, see what we can expect to uh, to be working on. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, plans and the instructions for the Carol Moran. Uh, it has a pretty good detailed instruction set and it comes in kind of like two pieces. You had the uh, introduction, the tools needed, and the step-by-step -step instructions in this book here. Then you have some plan sheets on how everything should look what the pieces are and how they're put together. So if you take time and kind of go over this, I think your uh, building experience would be, a, would be really well served. You have a really nice decal set. You have your wire uh, for your uh, handrails. And you have your balsa pieces here for your mast. Uh, the kit includes a drive shaft and uh, all the other hardware parts. You have the bulwarks, you have a, a wood motor mount, propeller, and parts for the rudder. Uh, some of the other uh, vacuum form parts are for the uh, the cabin and the lifeboats and also for the rub rails you have these extra styrene parts right here seems like a lot but it's really not uh, the hull is vacuum formed it comes in two pieces uh, as you can see there's a lot of excess here that we're going to have to trim to get the hull to match up But it shouldn't be too big of a problem. And finally you have uh, the rest of your balsa sheets here. They're all laser cut so they're really easy to work with and they seem to be real fine quality. So let's go ahead and uh, start putting this thing together. First thing we're going to start on uh, is the hull, and as you can tell, there was a lot of extra flashing from the uh, vacuum form processing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this off here to where these just match up real. There's where there's no gap in the hull. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut this with an exacto knife. Well, we're going to uh, start working on getting the excess off. A uh, real good tip here is to make sure you have a very sharp blade or new blade on your exacto knife. 
and it's going to make uh, working with this a whole lot easier. Uh, we don't need to cut all the way through. We just need to score the styrene and just be careful not to uh, cut into any, any fingers and Once you've scored it, you don't need to cut all the way through. You just going to start bending it a little bit and it'll start popping off just like that. So working with a styrene pass, it's not all that hard. And there we go. Uh, we're going to clean these up and then we're going to start gluing the hole together. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, dry fit the hole together prior to gluing and what I'm going to use are these binder clips that you can pick up from Office Depot or uh, Staples or whatever office uh, store you have in your area. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get as close as you can by eyeballing it and just kind of bind it in a couple places. like so. Walk down the middle of the hole and make sure everything kind of uh, looks like it fits evenly or as uh, straight as you can get it. You're gonna make sure everything kind of matches up. Just run your hand down to make sure everything's fitting well. Make sure the bow looks even. Now that we have it all bound up and everything looks pretty straight, we're going to go ahead and run a, a uh, some uh, medium CA glue here. And just let it sit for a little bit. Uh, our next step is to install the brass tube for the drive shaft. Uh, it's probably uh, really important that before you do that and glue this in that you need to uh, check and make sure that everything fits right and it uh, goes in correctly without any binding. And this one does very nicely. And uh, it's the same thing for your rudder. Uh, now I used a uh, tubing cutter you can pick this up at any hobby shop or you know pick it up over at Lowe's or Home Depot and you'll need to cut a piece that's like five eighths of an inch and that'll go right back here for the rudder so and then once you do that you need to kind of like take your exacto knife and make sure all the burrs are cleaned out and that it's nice and clean and then uh, you want to go ahead and test it to make sure it's nice and tight and it turns okay because it would be a heck of a ordeal to have to sit there and try and get this thing to work if you don't after you've already glued it in. Uh, another thing I've done was right here uh, the instructions call for just the K1 piece I added a little uh, uh, triangular brace right there and then I also, in, when you install the uh, tubing for the uh, main shaft, I cut a small piece of balsa wood to kind of support it from the top. So when I glue it there, it's in there and it's going to be nice and steady. So uh, let's go ahead and glue that all in and we'll see where we go from there. Uh, one more thing. Uh, we're going to be using uh, uh, green putty and that's kind of like a little bondo and we're going to use it right here where the shaft exits the uh, uh, stern of the boat and we're going to use the green putty right here uh, for where the rudder comes out 
I, I don't know if you can tell or not, but you want to go ahead and smear some extra uh, medium CA glue right here because that sticks to the styrene and then uh, that'll give the putty something to cling on to because it doesn't stick on to the styrene very well. And same thing down here, uh, we're going to put some green putty down here and so you want to spread some CA glue so it'll have something to bond to. And uh, we'll go from there and let's see how it works out. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and glue in the main shaft. Make sure everything's sitting nice and pretty. Uh, this is going to come in like an eighth of an inch out or a sixteenth of an inch. Make sure that's right. Just like that. Uh, we're using extra thick CA glue. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit back here. And some right here. We're also going to take our little piece here and uh, place it right there on the shaft. Give them support. And now we're just going to let that set. Now next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue the rudder shaft, the uh, brass tubing for the rudder shaft. It's uh, five eighths, five eighths uh, inches long. Uh, I only have two hands and I need six, so uh, we'll let you know how that finishes up when uh, when we're done. Okay, I've gone ahead and used the uh, green putty here. Uh, it's fast drying, takes about 30 minutes. I just applied it, and I uh, applied it to the uh, uh, brass tubing for the rudder, and where the uh, brass tubing for the uh, dry shaft exits the boat in the back. And uh, more than likely, you're going to need to use this in a uh, well ventilated area. Uh, you can also use this for, I've over sanded on this spot right here, so. Uh, as soon as this dries, it sands off really easy, and uh, it'll be nice and nice and smooth for the paint job, and you won't be able to tell that uh, uh, I kind of scratched it up back there. So there we are. We've gone ahead and uh, installed the dry shaft and the rudder tube, and we'll just move on from here. Our next step, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, main deck supports. Uh, right here, it was going to require a, a, a 1 8 by 1 8 inch uh, balsa stick that's 16 and a half inches long and right here on the plans you have uh, the diagram on how to make the relief cuttings I've already done this and you'll need a really sharp exacto knife but just go right here match up the ends here and just start cutting but not all the way through this is going to help us to uh, when we are moving this put up uh, when we're placing this along a uh, uh, rounded edge. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is, uh, since we've already made the relief cuts on uh, all four ends of the uh, sticks, balsa sticks, we're, we're going to go ahead and get our height gauge, pull this off the uh, uh, balsa sheet that has all the parts, and this is going to be used like this. We're going to use this to measure out where The main support beam, uh, main support is going to be so, just like this. Then we're going to take a close pin and just mark it there, and do the same for the other end over here. Using your height gauge right here, make sure everything's where it needs to be. Same here, all the way to the end. Make sure you measure it, make sure everything's sitting nice and even with the gauge. That would be nice and straight. 
Well, we got the uh, supports in for the uh, main deck, and they're nice, nice and tight. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the rub rails, and uh, per the instructions, I've gone ahead and made all my markings along the hull, and to make things easier, I made the uh, distances for the rub rails onto this balsa stick here. And as you can see, I just went ahead and marked, went down the line and marked them. And uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, start putting the rub rails on. Here we are, we're going to start working on the first rub rail. Uh, the markings are going to be the top of each piece of styrene that you're uh, putting here. Uh, I'm using clothespins all the way around. And then uh, just go ahead and uh, put uh, small daubs of, uh, of the thin CA. Uh, let it set real quick and then after they're all set you can go ahead and take your clothespins off and just glue the whole strip. Uh, again be careful that you don't glue your, your clothespin to, uh, to the rub rail. Okay, we got the styrene uh, strips uh, put on the boat for the rub rails. Uh, using the uh, clamps and the uh, clothespins, you're able to get to the first first three. But as you get down to the bottom one here, uh, you have to use your finger, hold it in while you're gluing it. So you need to be very careful doing that. Uh, personally, I wish they had uh, molded that into the uh, styrene too. But you know, this adds a little extra detail to it. So. Well, now we're going to go ahead and install the combing on the boat. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily uh, glue uh, these little pieces on the bottom of the main deck, and then we're going to take these parts and uh, glue them onto the deck. I'm going ahead and uh, tape the freeboard templates uh, from the drawing uh, schematics onto the boat here at the top. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a pin and, and poke a little small hole on, on all four corners of each hole and then we're going to cut those out with an X-Acto knife. Uh, hopefully I won't cut myself. So one at a time here. After we get through poking a hole on each one, uh, marking the corners, we'll uh, come through with a small uh, drill bit and drill a hole. Let me go ahead and uh, cut out the free port holes. Now we'll see what they look like. Well, they're there. I'm just going to take a little bit of extra uh, inspection to see them. So we'll go through and mark them with a pencil. Now I've gone back through uh, where I uh, pushed the needle through the paper and I've taken a pencil and I've marked each hole. And now I'm going to take a small drill. and drill out each one of those holes because I started from my exacto knife to cut those free ports and we'll do that for all of them now I've gone through each one of the pin mark holes and I've taken this little drill I just went ahead and uh, punched them out or drill them out and next we're going to take an exacto knife and uh, clean them out well I did the first one without drawing any blood so all you have to do is just take your knife and just uh, gently go through, just scoring it. You don't, have to, you don't have to apply a lot of pressure to the to the markings. And then once you uh, get all the way through, then you can just kind of clean it up. And we'll do that for all the ports. 
Okay, uh, I have all four free ports cut out and I've got a small file and uh, what you want to do is probably just go through here, kind of clean them up. Uh, I would just do the initial cut with the uh, X-Acto knife, uh, you don't have to press it very hard. Uh, you just have to score it two or three times for each one to go through and just come back with a small file or maybe some sandpaper and uh, clean up the holes.